Well, guys, I am out here this morning, just like I told you I would be. I, I decided to start working on this before it got too hot and humid. It's actually cool enough out here that, uh, like, it's a little chilly, but I'm fine with that. It's compared to what it was yesterday. I'm good with that. So, um, so what we're going to talk about this morning is removing chips. So this kitchen knife that came in, this is a Jay Garrison. I've never heard of this. Unless this is Jimmy Garrison, the guy I went to high school with. And this knife had a couple chips. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this around. We're going to see if we can take a look at the chips real quick because uh, I'm not sure how they're going to come out on film. Uh, I actually have removed the majority of the chips on this, but we're going to talk about chips, chip removal, and a couple different little techniques on removing chips on knives uh, because it's different for different knives. Uh, this knife had a pretty significant chip. I'll show you a picture of it and we'll talk about the chip removal on this being way different than chip removal on that and some of the things that I think are going on with it and you know because I'm not 100% sure. So we'll take a look at that but stand by for the music. Turn the volume down so we don't blow out your eardrums. said both of these knives had chips now the chips on this knife have been cantankerous and a real pain I, I was messing with this knife yesterday and then just kind of ran out of time uh, I had to do some stuff help my daughter help my wife uh, my wife sent me to the store but this knife had a much more significant chip than this did but I had a much easier time removing this chip than I did the chip on this knife. As a matter of fact, the chip is still there. And there's a couple reasons, I think. I think one, type of steel, which I'm, I'm, this is an unknown steel. I don't know what the steel is in this kitchen knife. And the thickness of stock. Uh, this kitchen knife is a good bit thinner, significantly thinner than this Crux. So this steel feels harder than this steel, first of all. So what I think is happening is there's a couple things at play here. I used a really coarse stone to remove the chip on this. So there's a few things at play. I think thickness of stock, angle it's been sharpening at, that I'm sharpening at, uh, it, it, not necessarily angle I'm sharpening at, but the, the bevel relative to the thickness of the primary bevel, which you'll see in a second, it's, it's significant. The hardness of steel, the, the thickness of the stock, uh, the type of steel, and the size of the chip. Because the problem I'm having with this is these chips are smaller, but they're giving me a harder time. And I, I, I'm gonna kind of elaborate on that in a second. But let's, take a, let's turn this around and take a look at this chip. And I'll show you a picture of the chip on this Crux and the before and after, and then I don't have a before on this, but we're, we're kind of where we're at, but I'm, I'm still messing with this chip. And I think we're, I'm gonna have to go up in grit instead of going down. I think going down in grit would be a mistake. So let me get this turned around and we'll take a look at this. At this point in this knife, it seems insignificant, but I mean, it really, it is, it's not insignificant. If you were to be doing any cutting, you would, you'd be definitely able to feel it. And then these ones at the back, now, they were way, 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 way worse when they first got here. This chip was about twice the size. And I'm having a hard time finding it now. Um, that chip right there was about twice the size, but it's still, it's still giving me a hard time. And I think I can tell you why. This chip on this steel is giving me a hard time because, one, I think a lot of it might have to do with heat treat. Hardness and tempering. This, this is really hard. You can feel it. It's a really hard steel. You can feel when it interfaces with the blade, with this, with the stone that it's really hard. And the other thing is, this is really thin behind the edge. Really, really thin behind the edge. So, 
Let me turn you back around and let me see if I can kind of explain it. Now, I've noticed this a lot of times, especially on kitchen knives. Those little chips wind up being a pain, and the more and more and more you try to go, that chip is just still there. And what I've noticed is, so I was on this 80 grit to begin with, and the chips just didn't go anywhere. I was taking off a significant amount of material, and I was like, all right, well, 80 grits as coarse as I've got, unless I go to those really, really, really super coarse stones. But historically, I've noticed that that doesn't get me anywhere. So what I think is happening is you have a chip. This is my chip, right? You see it? This is my chip. And I have my abrasive. And my abrasive is about the same size as my chip. And what I'm doing is, as I'm abrading the material here, I'm not taking off just the material here. I'm able to get material not just on this flat edge here. I'm able to just get up in there and I continue to abrade out the chip. And so what I found is that if I get something that's maybe a little smoother, what I start to do is I braid away the chip until I get to a point where I'm still able to get up in the chip. And it happens on thinner knives. So what I've done is I switched to my 250 grit stone. And that chip got significantly smaller, but now it's not getting any smaller. So what I think I'm gonna have to do now is I think I have to go up in grit again onto a less abrasive stone. But that's time consuming and it wears out my stone. So what's my other option? Well, my other option is I could cut my angle up real steep and take all that material off the edge and then just reprofile the edge. But the flip side is then I'm taking off a lot more material that way. So that chip is pretty much gone, but the problem is the ones at the heel are not. So my option is I could steepen my angle up on a really coarse stone and just blunt that edge and then go back and reprofile it again. And it's a fairly thin stock, so I could do that. But the question is, do I want to do that? Because then, yes, yes, that is undue wear on the knife, but it's also undue wear on my stones. So which, which course do I want to go? If I go up in grit a little bit and I take them off, I'm not putting as much wear on my stones because like if I do a really coarse, if I take that up real steep, that's, that's a lot of wear on my stones to, to blunt that and then go back and reprofile. That's like doing it twice. So there's a quandary there. It just depends on which way you want to go with it. You can do it. I mean, I've had to do the same thing with straight razors. Straight razors will do the same thing. If you get a chip in them, sometimes it's really hard to do it. Sometimes what you have to do is you just have to take the blade. It sucks to have to do this. So let's say that this is a straight razor. And sometimes you just have to take the blade and stand it straight up and down to flatten it out. Say it's got a frown or uh, well, it's called a smile. So when you tip it, when it goes from corner to corner, it gets a smile. And if you look at it, you have a frown. So when I look at it, when the spine is down, if it's smiling at me, well, that means I have to remove the material off that point. A frown is not s such a big deal. A frown, you can still sharpen that. and it, it'll, But you, 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 that, doing that, you like, you know, takes off a lot of material. It's harder, it, it takes off material off your stones, but then you go back and you sharpen. I've had to do that before. Or if you have a significant chip, sometimes you'll have to do that. But it's all in how you decide you want to do it. Now, question is, why do certain steels chip? It could be heat treat. Kitchen knives get a lot of abuse, and it depends on what you're cutting. Harder material like carrots, you chop through something and you slam into the cutting board. And if you've got a harder cutting board, it's, it's, there's a good chance you're gonna chip. Sometimes people will be cutting something and they're holding it with a fork and they cut into it and they hit the fork. It happens. Now, back to what I was saying about why I think that this much more significant chip came out easier. Well, came out easier because it was so much bigger. I didn't have that problem of the smaller grit 
being able to allow or that smaller chip being able to allow that 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 grit up in there to keep eroding it out it was a really big chip and so it was really easy to get out as a matter of fact it did not take but about an extra 15 or 20 minutes to get that chip out of there and i'm going to show you a picture like i said right about now That's what it looked like before. And now let's take a look at the after. As you guys can see, there's no sign of that chip in there. It's gone. I've, I've run my thumbnail down it. It's great. And now to, to back to that, let me tell you guys why I do that. That is a small little test that I came up with. I, I don't remember, it's not something I came up with, I should say. I, I, there's a lot of things I say up here that I say that I've come across or came up with. I don't want you guys to misunderstand. There's things that I say that, that are not mine that I say. Uh, I can't necessarily take credit for that. I can't remember where I saw that. But if you take your thumb and you just touch your thumbnail, just barely, just enough to make contact, and then run your thumbnail down it, you can find things on an edge that normally, like you can find things that you cannot see without a microscope. I'm not lying to you. You can find things on there you can't see without a jeweler's loop. And so it's just a nice little test for any little microchips or rolls that are in an edge. And so there's no sign of that chip in there, that roll. That, and it was, it was, you guys saw it. It was massive. It was a crater in that blade. So guys, that's it. Chip removal. There's just, there's some little things to do. Um, I'm not actually going to take you on the sharpening. You guys have seen me sharpen enough. But what I'm saying is, like there's some there's some ways to do it, but if you're not getting a response from a coarser grit, don't push harder, don't keep going on that grit, don't go down further. Maybe what you need to do sounds counterintuitive, but maybe go up to a higher grit and see. I've gone from a 650 to a 1000. I'd be fighting with a chip, and I'm like, God, this thing just won't. And you know, I'd be like, you know what? Because some of my, on my water stones, my true water stones, uh, some knives you can't use this on. So on my true water stones, uh, 650, the big flat bench stones I've got, 650 is the courses I've got. And so sometimes you'll be working on a 650 and you're just not getting anything out of it. And then all of a sudden you're like, I'm like, you know what? I can't go any lower. Let me try one higher and go up to a thousand. Next thing you know, that chip is almost gone. And then I go to a, a you know, from a you know to to a two thousand and from a two fifteen from a thousand to two thousand it's it's all but gone and then as you finish out your sharpening it's gone completely it's just a weird usually like i said on thinner much much thinner blades is where you run into that where you have much less contact with the stone where your bevel is is just less contact like, like i said so much much thinner behind the edge much thicker behind the edge different amount of bevel much 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 thicker behind the edge than this i wish i had a set of calipers but i can't afford a set of mantoyas they're they're fucking like three or four hundred dollars and at this point that's 600 more than i got so guys that's it chip removal uh, just a little thought on sometimes chips removing a chip go the other direction it's it sounds kind of counterintuitive but it's sometimes going to a higher grit will kind of get you further than than going back down in grit so guys i gotta finish these knives uh if you guys like the videos give them a thumbs up if you don't like them give them a thumbs down i know i preach that in the videos but that's how we get things shared that's how we get a bigger community uh if everybody would just like the videos it would be great uh or dislike them but if you don't like them give me a reason why um, in this corner is going to be a video YouTube thinks you like down here will either be a link to a one of my friends channels or a video that I think you like up here is going to be a subscription link and down here will be a GoFundMe if that's something you choose to do as always guys there will be a link to my daughter's GoFundMe down below if you choose to to uh, help support my daughter's ice skating I'd greatly appreciate it but if you can't support all I ask is that you try to share it um, guys, I love you guys. I know it's been a long time since I did actual content. I apologize. It's just, it's hard to do actual content. It's, it's been, 
one, it hasn't been real busy, so there hasn't been a lot of interesting stuff to come in, and I just haven't had a lot of time because we've had a lot of stuff coming up into the school year. So, guys, I appreciate it. I love you all. Take care of yourselves. Take it easy. I'll see you tomorrow morning at around 8 in the morning grind. Take it easy, and I'll see you next time. If you need anything sharpened, contact information is in the description below.